Hey, Lockie. Hey, Ollie. This is a bit unexpected. What's up? Hey, Benji. You know how we've been building all this ludicrously huge terrain? Well, we were going to start a campaign pretty soon, but we've hit a snag. We, um, we kind of run out of time to get all the kill teams painted up. We could really use your help to make it happen, man. Will you join us? You know what? Because it's you two, count me in. Let's do this. I'm Benji, and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. Now, I'm not normally one for getting hyped up about brand new games and the freshest releases, but for me, Kill Team sounds like it'll push all the right buttons. The smaller board size, low model count, and games that can be played in under an hour just tick all the right boxes. And getting a chance to paint up a kill team alongside Lockie, Ollie, and Casey, the hosts of some of my absolute favourite YouTube channels, just helps sweeten the deal. This campaign is going to take place on the high world of Fendatha, once a bastion of imperial might, but now infested by filthy greenskins. And all these games are going to be played out across the amazing boards that featured on Zorpazorp and Broadsword Wargaming YouTube channels. I have been tasked with bringing the Emperor's attack dogs to the proverbial table, a space marine kill team to defend the Imperium of Man alongside Ollie's death corpse of Krieg, and fight Loki's orky villains and Casey's disgusting death guard. That being said, everything I'm hearing about a lot of the space marine teams sounds a bit… vanilla. With the lack of options and minimal weapon diversity in all the space marine kill teams, they sound a bit boring. Except for one. Enter the Death Watch. Comprised entirely of veteran Space Marines, Death Watch is filled with only the best of the best that the Astartes have to offer, accepting only the best and boldest from each chapter into their ranks. Whilst in the Inquisition service, their task is to stand sentry against any Xeno scum that threatens the Empire of Man. They're the perfect adversary to go up against Loki's Xeno filth orcs. In Kill Team, each Death Watch veteran has their own specialisation, whether that's warrior, fighter, gunner or heavy gunner, making them one of the most diverse kill teams available off the shelf today. What's more, you get a full kill team in just a single box of miniatures, so the barrier to entry is super low. Now there's no need to buy multiple boxes just to get the optimum loadout. To me, this makes them one of the best and most interesting kill teams out of the box. The sprues are absolutely jam-packed with options, with heads, weapons and shoulder pads galore, so there's huge scope for creating some unique minis and no two veterans will be alike. When building my team, I want to make each member of my kill team an individual and really bring something different to the table from the rest of the team. With the opportunity to mix and match chapters, I know I had to have each member be from a different one, and I wanted their specialisation and weapon choice to somehow reflect this as well. Casey, how's it going, man? Hey, man. Do you know what's going on with Ollie and Lockie? They're acting kind of strange. I know, man. I think they've been building too much of this stupidly massive terrain. I think the lack of sleep and probably some glue fumes are finally getting to them. I just hope that they're going to get their own kill teams painted in time for this campaign. And how are you getting on with yours? Oh, yeah, man. I've been uh, I've been working on them real hard. Real hard. They've been done for like a week and a half. Yeah. Awesome. I cannot wait to see what you've done with Papa Nurgle's finest. Looking forward to seeing your Death Watch, man. I'll catch you later. See you later, Casey. Right, back to building my team. After working out a rough plan of what I want to equip each member of my kill team with, I clipped all the relevant bits off the sprues and made small piles to be assembled later. My leader, who will be leading this valiant bunch into battle, is Sergeant Vassius Solis from the Ultramarines chapter and is armed with a bolt gun and power sword. My sneaky Raven Guard warrior is equipped with a Stalker bolt pistol to take out Xeno scum from a distance, while my Space Wolf fighter is armed with a Thunder Hammer to take business up close and personal. My Dark Angel's gunner is armed with what else but a combi plasma gun, and finally my heavy gunner from my absolute favourite founding chapter, the Salamanders, is packing an Infernus heavy bolter. As the saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, then kill it with lots of fire. At least I think that's how it goes. Is this the most competitive loadout? 
Who knows, I've not played a game yet, but I'm really happy that each of my kill team members is unique and is somewhat defined by their chapter. I attached the heads to a piece of sprue to make painting them a little bit easier later on. With my minis at least partially built, I base coated them in a flat matte black. Just try saying that three times quickly before taking to the airbrush to start laying down some zenithal highlights. As a very final highlight, I dry brushed the sharpest edges of the armour with a very pale grey, just to add a little bit more contrast from the rest of the armour. Now, normally I dread painting black armour, but since I've discovered Black Templar contrast paint, it's become one of my firm favourite colours. I thin the Black Templar down with water and carefully apply it to all the surfaces of the model, being careful to make sure it doesn't pull too much on any of the flat surfaces. A combination of the underpainting with the airbrush and the thin contrast paint leaves a fantastic effect once it's dry, and essentially does all the highlighting for me. Now, I don't really want to turn this into a painting tutorial because there are loads of those already out there, but I do want to touch on some of the most standout parts on these miniatures. Although each kill team member has a different weapon, I went for a similar paint scheme across all of them, essentially silver over all the metallic areas and red over the weapon casing. I wanted the weapons to really stand out on these guys. So the darker red was highlighted with a super bright pro acryl pyrrole red. And before anybody starts, I didn't drill the barrels and that was just to wind up the barrel drilling police out there. And obviously not because I completely forgot to do it. The other place I really spent some time on keeping tidy and to help make every member look like an individual was the shoulder pads for the various chapters. Having never painted some of these chapters before, it was nice to get the chance to paint them, even if it was just some basic shoulder pads. Lastly, I wanted my leader to stand out a little from the crowd, so I gave him the helmetless head, which I'm pretty sure breaks all sorts of Imperial health and safety laws, but also gave him a bright blue power sword. I've never really painted any power weapons before, so this was a great opportunity to try and learn a new skill. Let me know how you think I did down in the comments below. I wanted my kill team's bases to match the sort of arenas they might end up fighting in, mainly post-apocalyptic and dystopian looking cityscapes. I also decided to knock together a display base for them out of this cheap picture frame whilst I was at it. I broke up some bits of cork to create concrete slabs and stuck them down with either super glue or a hot glue gun before priming the whole thing in black. Once this was dry, I airbrushed the center of each of the panels to an increasingly bright gray. I had originally planned on toning this back down with a black wash, but I was really happy with how it was looking, so I decided to not make any extra work for myself. Last but not least, I used some grimdark city rubble from Geek Gaming to fill in any of the gaps and surrounds on the bases and display board. You can pick some of this up for yourself from zorpazorp.com or from broadswordwargaming.com. Yes, I did have to shill for them to get in on this mega collaboration. My kill team is finally finished and ready to take on some Xeno forces. I'm really happy with how they've turned out and it was an awesome challenge trying to add some individuality and uniqueness to each member of my kill team. The different weapon loadouts and shoulder pads help make everyone slightly different and to me they really personify what kill team is. A group of warriors with different specialisations fighting together. The Death Watch veterans are perfect for this and now that I've painted up my five man team I cannot wait to pack them up and send them over to Australia and see how they get on in this campaign. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure you've clicked that like and subscribe button down below to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. If you want to support the channel even more then make sure you go down and check the links in the description below, especially my Element Games affiliate link and my Patreon program. I want to give a huge shout out to all my amazing patrons for their continued support. It absolutely means the world to me and every penny in support I get is reinvested back into the channel. Thank you for watching guys and I will see you in the next video. Benji out. Five models? Dude, you know you've got to paint two teams, right?
Hang on, you guys never said anything about painting two teams. One for me to film and one for Ollie. Yeah, okay, so I've still got some painting to do then. I'm gonna go.